India has a unique intellectual and cultural tradition that goes back over 5,000 years. Over these 50 centuries, Indian scientists and scholars, artists and engineers have studied and made original contributions in fields as diverse as mathematics, medicine, astronomy, ecology, architecture, music, economics, philosophy, linguistics, and literature, just to name a few. But how much do we really know about this extensive and profound Indian heritage? What does the average Indian really understand about the works of Bhaskara, Charak, Parmeshwaran, Bhojaraj, Chanakya, Adi Shankar, Panini, or Kalidas? Professor Rama Subramanian is a globally renowned scholar with deep expertise in Advaita Vedanta and the Indian tradition of mathematics and astronomy. He also holds a PhD in theoretical physics. He currently teaches at IIT Mumbai and has received several honors and recognitions for his work in traditional Indian knowledge systems. Many of us till today are not even aware of the rich heritage that we have. So lack of knowledge is one of the most fundamental factors. If a nation has to understand what its heritage has been, there should be courses which is available either at the school level or there should be parental care which can teach them irrespective of what is being taught in the school or there should be literature which is available to a common man which he can read for himself and analyze for himself to understand what its contribution is. Now we are lacking in all the three aspects. As a result, it is not a surprise that none of us are aware of our own cultural or scientific heritage and its value. As a nation, we need to devise strategies to make people aware of their own cultural and scientific heritage which cannot be gained with the texts that are currently available. So we have to design courses, we have to develop texts, so which throw enough light on our own contributions. If it is done, then definitely a few among the young minds may get excited about it and they may be able to do some remarkable work in their own chosen fields. So an introductory course both at school level as well as at college level I would say should be made mandatory. Agastya Gurukulam is proud to introduce a learning program that aims to fulfill this long-standing and urgent need. Agastya was formed by a team of dedicated professionals who are passionate about the teaching and revival of classical Indian knowledge systems. Agastya's program goes beyond simply creating an awareness of Indian culture and heritage. It aims to build a deep understanding and expertise in uh, subjects that were once part of the classical Indian intellectual framework and that continue to be relevant today. Um, our uh, program of weekly classes will kick off with a month-long immersion program in India. Uh, for one month, students will make their home in Pondicherry, which is a cosmopolitan town with deep cultural and spiritual roots, where they will live, learn and serve in a safe and nurturing environment. Students will learn Sanskrit, Indian mathematics and science, architecture and history from globally renowned teachers. They will immerse themselves in various classical and traditional arts of India. They will visit sites of cultural and historical importance and also get involved with ongoing projects to see in practice what they learn in the classroom. So they will deepen their knowledge of India, discover new interests and build lifelong friendships. In short, they are going to have a wonderful summer. The seaside town of Pondicherry is home to the world-famous Sri Aurobindo Ashram and Oroville, an ideal township that includes within itself 
a green zone with organic farms, dairies, wildlife habitats, and soil and water conservation projects. According to some accounts, the old name of this place was Vedapuri, which is linked by legend to Rishi Agastya himself, who is supposed to have situated his ashram at the very site where the Sri Aurobindo ashram exists today. Professor Sampadananda Mishra is the director of the Sri Aurobindo Foundation for Indian Culture, where he regularly conducts workshops and classes on Sanskrit, Mantra Yoga and Indian scriptures in addition to other subjects. He is specially focused on creating children's literature and children's programs for Sanskrit learning. Namaste, I'm Sampadanand Mishra speaking from the international headquarter of Sri Aurobindo Society Pondicherry, India. I'm very happy that this program, Unmesh, Explore, Evolve and Realize is taking place in Sri Aurobindo Society premise. This is going to be one of the wonderful programs where uh, we will have lots of fun, lots of experiential learning and uh, the subjects like math, science, cultural history, Sanskrit and uh, Indian culture, the whole cultural heritage, arts, crafts and so many other things. So uh, in addition to a uh, uh, lot of admin responsibilities uh, in coordinating this program, I will also be uh, responsible teaching uh, Sanskrit language and literature uh, where uh, the whole idea is not just to learn the language, learn few vocabularies or sentences or conversational aspect of it, but we will be learning the very, uh, going deep into uh, the understanding of the very spirit, flavor and uh, the force and simplicity of this language and then feel the uh, pulsation of the language, the vibration, the purity of the vibration of these sounds through different kinds of programs. And I'm sure all the parents and all the children who will be participating in this program will have a great experience in entering into the very spirit of India. So, uh, dear parents and uh, children, we invite you wholeheartedly to be a part of this program and then make it a grand success. Thank you. Namaste. Pondicherry is an ideal location for visiting several sites of great cultural and architectural importance. Students will visit several sites of these cultural monuments in the company of an internationally renowned architectural expert and they will learn about the central role of these buildings in the daily life and culture of society. Dr. Chitra Madhavan has researched extensively on temple architecture, iconography and epigraphy as the author of several books and articles on the culture and heritage of South India and as an engaging and passionate teacher she is much sought after to teach and lecture in universities all over India. Hello, I am Chitra Madhavan. I am a historian uh, focusing on temple architecture, sculpture and inscriptions. I am very happy to be part of this camp where I will be teaching temple architecture and sculptures. It is uh, very important for all of us, especially the younger generation, children, to know about uh, our country's past through our ancient architecture and through our sculptures and through our inscriptions. Mm, we have a fantastic uh, tradition of building the Stapatya Vedam in this country, which is many, many hundreds of years old. We have temples across the length and breadth of India. Uh, at first sight, the temples in each part of the country may look very different, but essentially, the architecture has a basic plan and that comes from our Agama Shastras, which are the texts according to which the temples have been built. 
The regional variations happen because of the building material that is different in each part of this uh, country. While we do go to temples to pray, and these are essentially religious institutions, we should bear in mind that the architecture and the sculptures only enhance that value of our temples. If we miss seeing the beauty that is around us, we are missing a part of the ethos uh, that these institutions have had over the centuries. The music and the dance and the art and the architecture combined with the traditions and the rituals and the festivals have given a certain flavour to our temples. And unless children are taught to appreciate all of this, I'm afraid we'll be losing a sizable section of our tradition and our culture. It's necessary to infuse certain values associated with these temples to young students, and they need to take it forward and give it to the next generation. I look forward to interacting with these young students and teaching them about temple architecture and sculptures, and perhaps a field visit to one of the ancient temples as well. Besides learning from the best experts, students will also immerse themselves in a holistic Indian lifestyle with daily sessions of yoga, meditation, traditional arts and crafts, cultural performances, presentations, living in a caring and harmonious relationship with nature, games and group activities, and service volunteering in the community. So. Let's make this a summer of exploration and discovery, music and magic, fun and friendship. Ask us your questions, send us your comments, and reach out to us.